Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and do another special limit. Uh, right. So limit x tends to 0, tan tangent of x can be written as sine of x over cos of x, cosine of x, and this x is going to be here. So I'm going to break this limit into limit x tends to 0 uh, into sine of x over x into limit x tends to 0 over 1 over cosine x. Now as we know this is something which is equal to 1. If you watch the first part, you would know this is equal to 1. And if I plug in x to be equal to 0, this is going to be cosine of 0 which is again equal to 1. That means this is 1 into 1 which is equal to 1. Which means I can say that limit x tends to 0, tangent of x over x is equal to 1. Now usually in your limit questions you're going to get two functions. You know let's suppose limit x tends to a and I have uh, x plus a over x minus a, something like that. Right? The function would be framed in such a way so that you know if you plug in this value of a into this, you would gonna you're going to get zero in at the bottom, right? So you're gonna get zero here. Now that does not mean that the limit does not exist. That does not mean that limit tends to infi infinity. That means the f of x and the g of x have something in common. So what I can do is I can actually break it into let's say f1 of x into f2 of x and g1 of x and g2 of x. This is something that you're supposed to do in every limit question. Trying to break this function into two parts and trying to break this function into two parts. So at the end of the day you can actually eliminate the functions and get a function like that which do not give you an infinite number. Right? So we're going to do a lot of questions on that. Uh, let's suppose if the question is that limit x tends to 1, you have x square minus 1 over x minus 1. Right? So again, this is f of x and this is g of x. As you can see, if I plug in x to be equal to 1, this quantity is going to turn out to be equal to 0. So what I can do is I can actually break this function into x plus 1 into x minus 1. And at the bottom there is x minus 1. And I can eliminate this x minus 1. And at the end of the day, I'm going to have x plus 1. That means if I plug in x to be equal to 1, limit of x tends to 1 of x plus 1 is going to be equal to 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So suppose you're understanding the, the, the way you have to solve every limit question. Uh, don't just straight away plug in a number there. Try to manipulate it in such a way so that you're able to eliminate the factor at the bottom and in the in the denominator, uh, which gives your limits value to be infinite. You know, which makes it zero at the bottom or anything else to be to be clear. So let's try it in a couple of questions. There. Okay, so so let's go ahead and do this question now. Uh, so. Whenever x tends to infinity, there is something that you can do. Let's suppose if I want to find limit x tends to infinity, you know, something, something, something. Then what you can say is you can actually bring everything in terms of 1 by x, you know, because 1 by infinity is equal to 0. So what you can do here is, first of all, you know, you see, uh, uh, you see uh, a kind of a under root plus something. So what you can do is you can actually rationalize as well. Something that you can use very effectively. So what do you mean by rationalizing? And rationalizing if I say you have root x plus y. So what you can do is you can actually divide by root x minus y. And you can multiply by root x minus y. And over here you can actually use the expression of a plus b into a minus b that is equal to a square minus b square. That will help you to get rid of this under root in the numerator or you can even do it for a denominator as well. So if I kind of rationalize this, I can say limit x tends to infinity root of x square plus 2x minus 1 minus x into root of x square plus 2x minus 1 plus x divided by root of x square plus 2x minus 1 plus x. So from here I can say that limit x tending to infinity. So this is going to be a plus b into a minus b. So this is going to be the plus part and the minus part. 
that is a square minus b square divided by root of x square plus 2x minus 1 plus x. So this is going to amount to this x square and x square is going to cancel out. This is going to amount to 2x minus 1 over x square plus 2x minus 1 positive x. Now, as I said, bring everything to 1 by x format. I'm going to multiply by 1 by x and I'm going to divide by 1 by x. So if I do that, I'm going to get limit x tending to infinity. So this is going to be 2 minus 1 by x. The denominator, so when this x enters the under root, it becomes x square. This is going to be 1 plus 2 by x minus 1 by x square plus 1. So as you know, uh, once I plug in the infinity here, this is going to be 2 minus 1 by infinity divided by under root of 1 plus 2 by infinity minus 1 by infinity because infinity square is again infinity. Uh, it's like a big C of infinity plus 1. Now, uh, as you know that 1 by infinity is equal to 0, I'm going to get 2 minus 0 over under root 1 plus, this is going to be 0, uh, this is going to be 0 plus 1. So this is going to be 2 by 2. This under root 1 plus under root 1 will become 2. That is equal to 1. So the answer over here is that this infinity is equal to 1. Alright, so I suppose two things we learned today. How to solve the infinite uh, limits and uh, how to rationalize, right? So that is something which is very, very important in this manipulation here. Let's move forward to the next question. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and do this question. Now, limit 1 is going to be equal to, so I'll just plug in the value of negative 2 into this, which is going to be negative 2 plus positive of negative 2. Uh, modulus of negative 2 which is going to be equal to 0. Limit 2 would again I'll just plug in negative 2 here that is going to be negative 4 and a positive 2 which is going to be equal to negative 2 and the limit 3 I'll have to do a little bit of uh, manipulation in limit 3. Uh, I can actually write cos of x to be equal to sine of 90 minus x. If you haven't learned this if you don't know about this uh, you can actually get a trigger from this. You know, you have to make something in terms of, uh, because if you use this sine x over x limit, uh, you would know that you have to bring this in terms of sine x. So how will you convert this cos x into sine x? You're going to use this identity. I don't mean to, uh, you know, make you cram this up. You can clearly see that cosine of 0 is equal to sine of 90 and uh, cosine of 30 is equal to sine of 60. You now, if you even try to find the standard angles, you'll, you'll use this expression. So I can say cosine of 30 is equal to sine of 90 minus 60. So you can actually write this to be sine of 90, which is pi by 2 uh, minus x. And you have to convert this into pi by 2 minus x. You're going to say negative 1 into pi by 2 minus x. So this thing is going to turn now to be equal to 1. But this negative 1 will say limit 3 is equal to negative 1. So which limit is the greatest? Limit 1 is the greatest. So I suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here. Moving forward to the next question. Okay, I made a small error here. It should be 90 minus 30. Fine. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do this question. As you can see, it's actually written on the question space that you know you have to rationalize this. And since x is tending to infinity, we know that 1 over infinity is equal to 0. So we'll try to bring everything in terms of 1 by x. So limit x tending to infinity, I'm going to rationalize it first. x tends to x raised to power 1.5 into under root of x cube plus 1 minus under root of x cube minus 1 into under root of x cube plus 1 plus under root of x cube minus 1 divided by the same thing that is under root of x cube plus 1 plus under root of x cube minus 1. So from here, I'm going to get limit x tending to infinity of x to the power 1.5 into, uh, so this is going to be, this is going to turn out to a square minus b square, that is this square minus this square, which is going to be x cube plus 1 minus of x cube and plus of 1 divided by under root of x cube plus 1 plus x cube minus 1. So this is going to turn out to limit of x tending to infinity. 
that is x to the power 1.5 this and this gets cancelled times 2 divided by the same thing right here right uh, which is there now what we're going to do is we're going to divide the whole expression we are going to divide the whole expression by x to the power 1.5 we're going to say this multiplied by 1 by x to the power 1.5 this getting multiplied by 1 by x to the power 1.5 so that when this x to the power 1.5 goes into this uh, under root, it becomes x to the power 3. So this is going to be limit x tending to infinity. Now I, this and this is going to cancel out. So I'm going to have 2 at the top divided by under root of x cube divided by x cube is going to be uh, 1 plus 1 over x cube plus under root of 1 minus 1 over x cube. So that if I plug in x to be infinity, I'm going to have 2 over 1 plus 1 over infinity plus under root 1 minus 1 over infinity. That is going to be 2 over, this is 0, this is 0, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. That means the answer to this is equal to 1. So suppose you're understanding what I was trying to do here, guys. Let's move, uh, move on to the next Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and do this question. Uh, so it says that limit of x tends to 0. So as soon as I see sign something, I have to make sure I get that something here. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to divide by pi by x. So I'm going to divide this whole expression by pi by x. And I'm going to multiply this whole expression by pi by x. So this x and x is going to get cancelled. And I'm going to have limit pi times x into sine of pi by 